next, finish. I forgot something. What did I forget? The where clause. We'll pull ID equals query string ID. Remember to click add. Okay. Now let's look at the, the code here. Ah, now notice, oh yeah, we have our parameters. We have our insert, update, and delete parameters. So now, oops, we should be in better shape. Let me try to, there we go. Because it knows now the type of data those fields are. Without those parameters, it doesn't know what those fields are. So, as we look, update poll set category ID equals question mark, question equals question mark, where poll ID equals question mark. These parameters tell it where those fields get filled in from, and it also tells it what type of data it is. So, the framework should have no excuse for not being able to do the update now because we're telling it explicitly where to get the values from and explicitly the data types of those. So let's give this one a, a whirl and see if it works. And it's not going to work because I have to go back and enable the edit. Oh, it's already enabled. All right, so now it works. And if I hit edit, cancel, it goes back to that. What if I go in and hit edit and put garbage here? Boom, input in the wrong format, right? Because that's supposed to be a number. What if I put a number that doesn't exist in the category table? You can't add or change a record because related record is required in table category. Well, how do you suppose we're going to fix this? Some well, we could put some validation in there. We could make that a drop down. All right. And we could go in and put our air trapping in. All right. So let's let's do this in 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 order. All right. And this stuff should be almost exactly the stuff that we did um, with the grid view, right? So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some error trapping on here. Because remember, in addition to the errors that we can anticipate, right, what are the errors that we can anticipate in this case? Well, the drop down has the wrong value, or, or we, we, we put in the wrong value uh, for the foreign key constraint. Or a duplicate question name. Remember, we made that a, a unique index. In addition to all those errors that we can anticipate, there's a whole slew of errors that we can't anticipate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, I'm going to put sort of the catch-all that after the update, if it fails, I'm going to handle it. So how do I do that? I go here and say on, and again, it's the same thing as with the grid view, on item updated equals new event. All right. So now I can look at my code behind file, and I can see there's a new event, or new function, and I can say, if e dot exception not equal null if it's not equal to null it means that there's an error all right what is e e is sort of the Update report that contains a bunch of information about what just happened. All right. 
one of the things included as part of E is the exception. So if there's an exception associated with E, that means that an error just happened. There is no exception, there is no error. So if E exception equals null, then I want to put something on the page. So let's go and let's add a label here. start out with that text being nothing. And if there's an error, if there's an exception, I want to say something like label one text equals error updating. Now, again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to jot that down. I probably would put a more detailed explanation of what I thought the possible errors were. What's the last thing I have to do? I have to tell it that we handled it. Now, notice that when I created this label, I didn't create it as part of a template column. All right. Remember, those template columns only kind of exist some of the time. Uh, so we can't count on that being there. All right. As such, and there's a different way to reference them because of that. As such, if I want to make sure that there's a field that's already, always there, I'm not going to put it in the template. I'm going to put it on the page itself. So now I should be in business with this. And I go here. I edit this guy. Put garbage in. Boom, I get my error updating. All right. Okay. But we can do better than that, right? Why do we still need to do this check? Because what are we going to do? Let, let, me, let me ask that. What are, what are the two things that we're going to do here? Change the text box of category to a drop down. And what are we going to do with question? Put required field validator on it, because you have to have a question associated with the poll. So if we do that, we're going to take care of a couple of the possible errors that we can run into. If we do that, do we still need this code? Or did I just waste my time? Well, Steve, well we still need it. I'm not into wasting time, right? Why do we still need it if I'm going to develop the form in such a way that some errors are impossible to get? Because some user will find a way to make an error. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I hear where you're coming from. I'm going, I'm going to rephrase that differently because I, I really am somewhat sensitive on the whole blame the user mentality. <laughs> All right? Um, and, and therefore, I put it a different way. And, and, and the, the right answer is, you know, the, the more complete answer is, is that that's a couple of the errors that we can anticipate. There's a couple of errors that we can also anticipate that we might not want to take steps to prevent. We'll let it crash and clean up the pieces. For example, a duplicate question. A duplicate question is going to cause the error, but it's not worth it for me to, ch to validate for that. I'm just going to let it try to do the update, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to display an error. Then there's a whole slew of errors that, I mean, I'm aware of, but you can't particularly code around. Like, what if the database crashed the second before they clicked the update button? It's nothing the user did, all right? Um, it's nothing the program could anticipate. It's nothing the program could check for. But yet, we still don't want to pop up an ugly error message. So we do this for all the errors that we're not going to bother validating for, uh, and for all the errors that we can't validate for, that are just so unpredictable that there's
there's nothing we can do code-wise to prevent them from happening. All right, so let's go here, and I'm going to make both of these guys template columns. Go into Edit Fields. Yep. I'm going to make the category ID a template field, and I'm going to make question a template field. I'm going to go and edit these templates. I'm going to do this a little quick because we've done it before. All right. I'm going to edit the edit item template for question. And I'm going to put in a required validator. And I'm going to set the properties to, say, must enter a question. And control to validate is text box two. It's a text box in this field. Now, I don't really go into data bindings for this because I'm not hooking that up to the database. I just set the properties just like I would set a normal control. All right, for the categories, I'm going to create a drop down for it. So I'm going to create my data source. Oops. To pull a list of categories. All right. Now I'm not going to join the categories to the question. A lot of times students think that they need to do that. They need to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm pulling up the category for this question, so I need to join that. That's not what we really want. We just want, and again, think to yourself, what do we want in this data source? We want a list of categories, period. Nothing else after that. List of categories. How do I get a list of the categories? I get it from the category table. All right. Next. Finish. I can then go in and edit the templates for the category ID. And I can edit the edit template, get rid of the text box, and put in there a drop down. Now remember, with the drop down, we have to do two things. This drop down is wired to the database. So we have to make sure that it knows where in the database this is hooked to. That's the data bindings, where this is hooked to the database. And again, it gives me a choice, field binding, and it's bound to the category ID. In other words, whatever category we pick in there, we want to stuff in the polls category ID. For some reason, and I cannot predict this, this has happened since way back in the old days, Sometimes this will be disabled, and you have to put in the expression like that, bind category ID. I have no rhyme or reason why that happens sometimes. Now, the other thing I have to do is I have to say where this, data, uh, where this uh, dropdown gets populated from. What is the data source? And our data source is SQL data source 2. What do I want to display? I want to display the category name. What field is the value? And that will be the category ID. So, we should be just about there with the updates. Details. Edit. Question. Very good. Last thing we have to do is we should change that really to display the name of the category. And again, the way I like to do that is go in here and for the item template, don't use a label, but use a drop down. Same thing, edit data bindings to the category ID, 
choose data source. And then for good measure, I go in and make this guy not read only. Or read only, rather. So far, so good. Now, think of what I want to do next. Let's add delete into the equation. All right? If I'm not mistaken, we generated the delete. our data source. I can look in the source. Yeah, there's a delete. There's the insert. So, all I should have to be able to do is go in here and enable delete. Now we have edit and delete. And I run it. And I delete. Ah, well, we're back to that. How are we fixing this? We're getting an error because a database constraint is violated when we try to delete this guy. Right. We, we don't have cascade de delete enabled. Let's assume that we don't want cascade delete enabled. All right. So let's assume that that's set up correctly. The problem here is that it gave an ugly error. How do we fix the ugly errors? We put in our own code. Where do we put in our own code to solve this problem? Don't you put it in the CS file? We put in a CS file. Specifically where in the CS file? Same way we did the update, except yeah, except it will be instead of on item updated, it will be on item deleted. So in other words, so it after, it tries after it tries to delete it, okay, but, it uh, won't delete it. <laughs> but it hasn't deleted it. Okay. Right. So in, in other words, it, it, it's all a matter of uh, again, you know, you have three choices for the errors. You could you could do some validation. You could try to do something before it attempts it. Or you can let it try to delete it, and if it doesn't, just report the error gracefully. And, and again, depending on the error and depending on the situation, one of those approaches will seem better than another. So, for example, when we were talking about updates, with updates, it's easy enough to put a drop-down on there so that they can't put an invalid category. It's easy enough to put a um, required field validator on the question. All right? But... To go and look for duplicate questions, eh, that's a lot of work. I'm just going to let it try to update it, and if it doesn't update it, I'll just display the message. Kind of the same idea here. It would be a lot of work for us to go out and look for related rows to this table. So you know what? I'm going to let it try. If it can't, it can't. No harm done, and I'll just display the error gracefully. So I'll go in here, and... On my details view, I will say on item deleted equals create new event. Right, so far, so good. And I'll put just about the identical code in here. Except I'm going to say can't delete 
likely cause there are already answers for this poll. Again, notice I'm, I'm writing that error message in terms of um, what's going to make sense to the user as opposed to saying, you know, foreign key constraint, not cast, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, I'm going to write it in a way that's going to be understandable to the user. Notice also that the way I phrase it is I say likely cause, right? That's like the things that I'm kind of expecting to go wrong. But the database crashing, the database server crashing, or someone deleting the, um, you know, the polls table in the middle of this process or something goofy like that that I can't anticipate, I can't completely rule those out. So that's why I word it as likely cause, because I really don't know that that's the case. I suppose I could test the exception and see, but, you know, this, this way is acceptable too. At least we're not giving them those big monstrous error messages. All right. Uh, yeah. I had a question with regards to the, the overall power of delete. Uh, how can we confine it to so where we maybe delete frivolous far out factors as opposed to wiping out huge vital chunks of our database? Well, if it's really important, well, well like, for example, in this case, Let's say as soon as someone votes on it, we don't want to delete the poll. But if someone entered in a, a, a goofy poll and it, the voting hasn't started, we want to get rid of it. You can do that via foreign key constraint. I can put a restrict delete between the, um, between the um, uh, poll table and the answer table, all right, or the possible answers table or whatever. All right? And in which case, then, I won't be able to delete it that way. So that's one way I could do it. I'll give you another example, maybe with a database that makes more sense. Customers and orders, all right? Let's say someone signed up to be a customer and, you know, put in the name Mickey Mouse, you know, 100 Disneyland Lane, Orlando, Florida. And we look at this and we say, hey, we know that that's, that's goofy. Let's, let's pardon the pun. Uh, we know that that's not valid. Let's go in and delete it. Well, if they have orders associated with a, with a customer, we probably don't want to delete it, right? Because, hmm, something's going on there. But if it's just someone that some kid made, uh, created an account, and no orders are processed or anything, we want to delete it. Well, again, that's where the foreign key constraint came in, would come in. Now, your question might be, what if there is someone with orders that we want to delete anyhow for whatever reason, all right? You could then write a routine that would essentially clean up the database. First it would delete or archive the orders, then it would go and delete the customer. So, for example, maybe we have a customer that hasn't placed an order in 15 years with our organization. Well, in the interest of, of keeping the database trim, we might want to clear those out. We can't delete them because they have orders associated with them from 1998, right? So we can't delete them because we have that foreign key constraint between customer and orders. But what we could do then is we could write some code that would take and archive all the orders for that person, archive maybe their user information, and then delete out of the main table. So again, our focus in this class is just on the rudimentary delete it. Either there's a foreign key constraint or there isn't. Um, Either the, I'm sorry, I should rephrase that. Either there's cascading deletes or there isn't. But you could really do something where as if you wanted to delete a, uh, something, you could you know, write a routine to you know, archive the stuff before you delete it. Let me give you another example. All right? Let's say that a company was closing its... Um, Cleveland branch, all right? And let's say the employees weren't being fired, they are just being reassigned to other branches in the area, all right? So I wouldn't be able to delete the Cleveland branch because there's employees assigned to it. I could, however, have an application that I could pull up a branch and I could reassign all the employees, you know, put this one to... Lakewood, this one to Shaker Heights, this one to Broadview Heights. 
and then delete. And what it would do then is it would update all the employees so there would no longer be any employees for Cleveland, and then it could delete the branch. So you can do a lot of things, you know, you can do a lot of things on the application level to give you desired results that the database constraints prohibit you from doing. Now, in a case like that, you might want to have it like where only an administrator can do that. Maybe not every employee can, can do that. All right. But yeah, you can write things in the interface to, to handle these situations when you want to get rid of something, but the cascade delete won't let you, or the restriction of the cascade delete won't let you. All right. Let's try this. We should be OK. to here and you type in the event that you want to code for on in this case item delete ting or, or whatever and then it, as soon as you do that it just goes to the code or do you have to like double click or something well that will create the the function you then need to go to the you then you need to go to the uh, code behind file to see the code ask us to confirm the delete before it tries to delete it. Do we recall how we fixed that? On -click. Yeah. All right. So how do we get to the on client click? Well, we have to go in. this command field, what? A template column. Why do we have to make it a template column? Well, because by default, it just deletes. It doesn't ask for confirmation. If we want to do something different than that, we have to go in there. So I'm going to convert it to a template column. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit that template. And that's the item template. And then I can go on the link that exists in that item template. And I can say on client click, return, confirm. OK to delete or something along those lines. And now when we run this guy, We get the confirm. All right. Yes. Could you just put an else statement in the uh, delete event? A statement and you know wrap it in else underneath the, the if. else where underneath the if if it in other words if it's if it's true then message box dot show. No, for a couple reasons. First of all, this is the item deleted event. It, this would be trying to close the barn door after the horse is out. All right. <laughs> if it was able to delete it, it's gone by the time it hits the item deleted event. Okay. All right. So that's one reason you couldn't do it. Now you might say, well, gee, can I put a? Could I put it in the item deleting event? The thing to keep in mind, though is that server-side code can't throw up an alert on the client. 